name is Vanessa, also known as Kenya Queen, and welcome to my channel! Today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to kill the SAT or ACT on the first try. Not everything that I'm going to tell you is going to necessarily work for you 100%. If it works for you, great, wonderful, go ahead and use it. If it doesn't work for you, take it with a grain of salt. I'm going to give you a few about myself. My name is Vanessa. I go to the University of Pennsylvania, one of the eight Ivy League schools in the United States of America, and also the best one. I am an oncoming sophomore, so I just finished the college process not too long ago. I am in the Wharton School of Business. I got a 33 on my ACT on my first try. I did pretty well on my SAT ACT, if I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna be talking about how I decided to take the ACT and use that as my score rather than my SAT score, how to do well on it on the first run rather than taking it multiple times. These are scores that are important for no matter which school you go to, but they're important especially for people who are going to more selective schools. What is the ACT? What is the SAT? Are they the same thing? What are they? like? Girl, let me know what is it. The SAT and the ACT are two completely different tests, but they both kind of gauge the same thing. They both are used in college admissions, but the SAT has reading, writing, math, and has an essay portion of it. The ACT, which is the one that I took, has English, math, reading, science, and an essay. So both of them have an essay, but they have different components. I took the ACT because I felt more comfortable with it. Well girl, how did you figure out that you wanted to take the ACT and not the SAT? All right. For me, determining whether or not to take the SAT or the ACT was best figured out by taking a simulation of each test all the way through and then figuring out which one I felt more comfortable with. Okay, Vanessa. So, what even is a simulation? Hello? You just need to get yourself into a mode of thinking that you are taking the real test, even though you're not. Put yourself in as real conditions as you can. A lot of the time, people will take the real test multiple times in order to figure out which test works for them. In reality, you're spending a whole bunch of money because each time you take this test, now there are waivers. You can bypass the fee necessary to take the test if your family qualifies for a waiver. However, if you do not, each test will run you about 80 bucks. So you don't want to take it too many times because the money adds up. You can avoid all of this stress. You can take simulations. You don't have to take the real test. You just have to act like you are. You have to test like you are. And then when the real test comes, bada bing bada boom, you get the score that you wanted. The kids will take the real test once and score perfect. Everyone begins to wonder, well how did they do that? How did they get there? How did they- It was not their first try. They had taken multiple simulations of the test. For my ACT score, I got a 33. 33 is ranked 99th percentile. Pretty much anywhere between a 33 and a 36, it's pretty much given the same weight. If you're trying to score for a 33 or above or get 99th percentile on either of these tests, the one way that you can make sure that you do that is just to take as many simulations of the test as possible. SAT or ACT prep books, you can find them on Amazon for used or half price. You can also go to half price books, which has a ton of ACT, SAT books. Take one of these books. If you're at the library somewhere that you can't mark in the book, get a separate sheet of paper and take the test there. Take the test and put yourself under time conditions. Take your phone, for example, put a timer on it, set your timer to whatever the timing of the test is. Go through each test completely once. Do not stop to check yourself and make yourself feel good because you got the first five questions. It's a simulation of the actual test. If you were taking the actual test, you wouldn't have the ability to come back and check yourself. I took the SAT in one setting and then I took the ACT all in one setting. I graded them myself, went through, checked the answers to see what I missed, and then from there was able to evaluate and give myself a score. Because at the end of each of these books, they usually have a scorecard depending on how many answers you got right, what your score would average look like. There are plenty of charts online that you can find that you can use to see which test you did better on and which test you did higher on because they are graded differently. Once you've figured out which one of them works best for you or which one you did better on, Forget the other one and focus on that one. If you're too close to call, whichever one you feel most comfortable with should be the test that you go with. I took the ACT in different settings. Sometimes during your test, there might be other things going on outside. If you study only in a silent library, the only time that you're taking the test, you'll never be acclimated to the idea that there might be something else going on that you might not have control over. Sometimes my friends are taking the test and there is construction going on, or there's a band playing outside. In order to get yourself acclimated into sounds like that and other things going on around you, I think it's best to not just study in a library, but to study in a coffee shop. Go there, sit down, there's a whole bunch of noise going on. If you can focus in those settings, you can focus anywhere, no matter what is going on. 
test is about a four hour test, it's not short. So it's gonna take you a while to get through the entire exam. I would take the test once a week, I start maybe at 11, end at like four, and then take an hour to just grade myself and go through and see what I missed. Each time that I did it, I was very diligent about going through and seeing what I missed and why I missed it. So I would go through each question and try and determine why this question, why did I miss it? Why did they get that answer right? How did they get to the thinking of the answer that was correct instead of the answer that I got? There might be specific sections that need more focus and more care than just the entire test in general. If you need more time focusing on geometry, focus on that small portion of that. Or if you need more understanding of the definitions of words for the exam, for the SAT, I know they're very big on words, you might need to spend more time doing flashcards on those words in addition to already studying, studying for the exam. All of this is to make sure that you take the test once. It might seem like a lot of work in the grand scheme of things, but in reality, if you do this for a month and you take the test once, you've saved yourself so much time. Should I get a tutor? Should I not? Do they work? Do they not? This is now my own personal experience. I had a tutor. Tutoring, I would say, is a no-go unless you have somebody that's not going to cost you too much. I think it's kind of a waste of money, especially because the resources around you are probably free and probably are more accessible than having a tutor. If you have a friend of yours who just took the exam, who got a really good score, a score that you want on it, ask them for advice. If you have teachers who are more experienced with the test or have more understanding of the test, ask them. There's no need to pay all the money for a tutor if the resources that are necessary are right nearby you. There's a whole series of videos on YouTube called Khan Academy, full of videos on every single subject you could even think of. Math, English, science, whatever. It's all there. Videos that walk you through step by step as to how to understand the concept. Take you about five minutes to watch each video, but you come out of there completely understanding the subject. Try and take the test before your senior year starts. I think if you're taking it during your senior year, there's just too much going on. It's just not a move. It's just not the move. I personally took it June of my junior year. Your second semester of your junior year is a perfect time to take the test. So anywhere between that January to that June, those are great times to take the exam, try and get it done, and just have it out of the way. How do I know if my score is a good score. Good is relative. So a good score to me might not be a good score necessarily to you or to the college you're applying to or etc. A good way to figure out if a score is good for you is to look it up online. For Penn, the average was like a 32. Anywhere between a 30 and a 34 was pretty much ideal. If you're applying to a state school, they're, they're going to be different. If you're applying to a community college, those scores will be different. Try and your best to be within the range of scores they like to see. The scores are only there basically to make sure that you have the academic capacity to stay, go to that school, attend that school, and do well in its classes. Now, scores are not everything. A lot of people have told me, oh, well, if I get this score on my exam, or if I get this score on my ACT or SAT, like, there's no way I can make it into that school, or my scores are so good that there's no way that they could reject me, and neither of those two are true. I have friends of mine who made it into Penn with 27s on their ACTs. I have friends of mine who got rejected with a 35 on their ACT. Your scores are not necessarily going to correlate with whether or not you get into the school of your dreams. There are still many facets that go into an application, your essays, your recommendations, your extracurriculars, who you are as a person, all of those things will be a part of analyzing whether or not you should fit into a school or not. However, they are a part of getting you through the door and making sure that it is not a red flag as to a reason as to why a school shouldn't accept you. That's basically why you take these tests. They might seem pointless, they might seem that they're so stressful. I know, like I know, it'll all be over within no time and before you know it you will be right where you need to be. If you learned anything from this video, make sure to comment below and let me know how I helped you. Also, just to be aware that you guys want more videos like this, if you would subscribe to my channel, I'm going to have a whole bunch of videos talking about the college process, to the SAT2 test, which nobody talks about, to applying to early decision schools, if you should apply early decision, if you shouldn't, early action, if you should or you shouldn't, what to do after being deferred. I was deferred. What does deferred even mean? How to decide which school you want to go to, how to manage all of the financial aid, all of those good things. My name is Vanessa also known as Kenyan Queen, and thank you for watching TTYLXOX.